This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. How are you going? Uh, you know what, Jared? I'm feeling a bit of deja vu. Yeah, I don't know why that could be. It but... could possibly be because we've already done this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we've had what we call a rehearsal of this episode. Not an so... intentional one. <laughs> No, but as it turns out, it was a rehearsal. So this one's going to be better, right? <laughs> but hopefully. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, anyhow. Literally, literally, folks, uh, you know, normally I don't do any setting changes, and I never do setting changes, so <laughs> once everything's working. And, you know, I didn't bother checking our recording after we recorded this past weekend. And I go and I set the premiere up for YouTube, and... I'm all there, ready for doing live comments. Everybody else is, and boom, the logo fires up. Hear that just fine. Everything's great. And then crickets. No audio yep. from me or Jared recorded at all. The lips are moving, but <laughs> no one's talking. <laughs> my, my, my wife goes, well, why don't you just do like a, a commentary over the top of it? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That could be funny doing like, you know, lip sync theater, but yeah. um, that might that be more be work funny. than necessary. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna we're going to we're gonna jump right into what this whole episode about is about, which is basically Zen's Mandalorian pinball. But as a bonus, we're also gonna take a look at Stern's Mandalorian pinball because we've never had the opportunity to see two tables released virtually at the same time from yeah. the two companies. You know, we've had Deadpool, you know, from Zen and from Mandal or from uh, Stern and we've also had Star Wars technically uh from uh, 19 yeah. of them from yeah, nine from Zen <laughs> and uh one from Stern. So it's not the first time that they've overlapped. Two themes. companies have released themes around a certain product. Right. But um, never have we had the opportunity to have them both being developed at the same time being given assets by Lucasfilm for both of them at the same time. Yeah. And being able to see really where the, the comparisons are. Yeah. It's it's kind of cool. Um, so this will be an interesting episode. It certainly was the first time. Let's see how it plays <laughs> out this time. <laughs> right. It was a good one. You guys really missed out. It's, it's a shame. Yeah, you it was great. Avoided. You should have been there. Yeah. You, you should know. have been there. Um, all right. Let's dive right in. <laughs> And we were going to, uh, I'm just going to show you the, all of the play field, just so you recognize what it is we're talking about. There's Mandalorian Pinball in all its glory. When we say it's all so of its pretty. glory, it, 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 it's, for Zen, a very nice layout. It's clean. Mm. You're able to see the shots. Zen did a wonderful thing by actually putting insert lights for all the chapters. Yes. They put insert lights, and granted, it's hard to see them right now because the image that they've provided... Uh, via their website, doesn't have anything lit up. <laughs> no, so it's a little bit sort of uh, lifeless. It's a little dank um, and dark and, and lifeless, which is kind of a bummer because when you're in it playing it, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like a lot of your Zen tables um, yeah. because things are moving and, and dancing around and, you know, that, that makes things visually interesting. Uh, something that I'd kind of pointed out that it was like, well, yeah, where are the lights? How come it's not doing pretty things? And as Jared pointed out. Yeah, it's sort of, well, you know, we were talking about, you know, a track mode and how yeah. important a track mode is on something like Zen, uh, not on, on Stern's um, products. You know, they are designed to entice you in um, to the products to, to get you to put your dollar in it. But I made the point that, well, you're already in the game. You don't really need to be <laughs> enticed. You're sort of there. So is it worth spending time engineering a light show? And you know, the funny thing is that that when you're actually in the cabinet overview, like when you're in VR and yeah. you're selecting your table and you're switching between tables, they actually have kind of implemented an attract mode in that where the lights are blinking off in a certain sequence. It looks like it's very scripted and very programmed. Sure. Um but and not like a not like a stern table does, where it cycles all the the light trees and certain um, patterns and everything yeah, like it does in a track mode. But this seems to be very much a canned light show that's overlaid over the cabinet. Um, so they kind of have an attract mode at that point to try and bring into like what what table should I select? Right. But when you're actually in the game and it's loaded, there is none because you've kind of already made your choice, haven't you? It, we have, and it's something that we even mentioned with uh, Zen. 
Star Wars VR that one of the things that's kind of disappointing is that the ambient room light doesn't change. And mm. because of that, it makes the light show on the table a little bit harder to even see in all of its glory. Yeah. So it, it's it just does one make of those... it a little bit harder to appreciate, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, because man. it's like you need that darker room. Like in FX2, the because the rooms changed in the way they looked when you switch between tables, you actually did have a bit more atmosphere. Yeah. In in that particular package versus Whereas here, Star we're Wars, maintaining because... the fan cave. Yeah, the fan cave is essentially the consistent experience across all the tables. So, but I would like to, the, I would like the fan cave to, you know, be like Alexa, turn lights to the Mandalorian, light. and then the lights affect that way. <laughs> that that would be cool, actually. By yeah. the way, I'm going. To, I'm, this is a side pitch. Hey Zen, just an idea for an add-on to this VR package uh, with the fan cave. Can we get a Star Wars themed clock? that can be put on the wall so that I don't have to exit the program to find out what time it is or take off the headset to find out what time it is that I'm... (laughs) that I just want to look in my fan cave and go, oh yeah, it's that time. Okay. That actually would be really cool to synchronize an in-game clock with your actual time. Yes. Um... I know for me, it's like it's easy for me because on the controller, I just press the Oculus button. It brings up the Oculus overlay and it has a time oh, on well, it. I don't want so to have to bring it's... up the overlay. If I'm in the fan cave, I'm in the fan cave. Just give me a Star I don't want to go out of VR. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go out of VR. That's all. Yeah. That's all I'm asking for. It's not too much, is it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, think let's, so. Back to the, uh, let's back to the action. Let's go over what is going on in this table here. Um, mm. As you can see, it's a wide body. How do we know it's a wide body? Because it's got three lanes for yeah. <laughs> over here. That's It's not a super wide body, but it's your typical Zen wide body going on. Um, we're going to go... The point, oh, yeah. At the point where it was like, well, you know, Adam's family technically had two return lanes um, on the left-hand side as well, and it was narrow. Uh, but yeah, this definitely like when you're switching between the tables, this does have a little bit more girth to it, doesn't it? Yeah, like it's not Jedi girth, but it's no, it's not. <laughs> that Jedi is like a super mega Gottlieb super wide body. That one, yeah, Jedi's, I love it. Jedi's actually. a freaking porn star. Um, all right, so <laughs> <laughs> let's go left to right on our table. Uh, we have this shot right here, which basically is a little mini ramp that goes up here and into a funnel action, a pool, uh, if you a bowl. will. Uh, a witch? A bowl, a yes. Bowl. Um, this is the forge, the foundry, the forge, the, all the flames are above here. Uh, if you shoot a shot right up into this, that is for your flamethrower mode. That yep. uh, You shoot enough shots that gives you fuel for your flamethrower. Uh, we'll talk about the flamethrower mode in just a bit. Uh, mm. Right underneath that is a little... Uh, another kind of ramp action. Basically, the ball goes up here and then around, and then there's three drop holes, a la mm. uh, Space Shuttle. Space Shuttle. Yeah. Space Shuttle. Um, that drops down into a, a pop bumper cluster. Uh, so you got three holes here for that. Then you have this ramp here. This is your main... This, you're going to be hitting this ramp a lot. This is your mission mode ramp, essentially. Right. Uh, shooting up here sends it up into this habit trail that then puts it back into the forge. Hit this enough times, that's what's going to uh, trigger one of the chapters, uh, or the mm-hmm. chapter starts for... And uh, that your, ramp your is story. a U-turn ramp as well. So um, it doesn't. You, it's blocked by the big forge thing at the top, but it's yes. actually a U-turn ramp or an Immelman ramp that will actually invert your ball's path back over. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's neat. Uh, then going up next here, you have this little lane here then there with a target at the back. That's your bullseye target. Uh, and the ball goes up here, and that's where your some pop bumper action is. Uh, interesting to note, I have not detected scores happening when you hit the pop bumpers. Hmm. Which is it's weird a thing, and I haven't had a chance since we last recorded. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to go and play that and test it. But um, so it's almost as if your pop bumpers are just merely scrambling the ball. Um, which there's that makes no sense because everything on a pinball table scores something. That yeah, it has to. Well, Otherwise, it is used it for in your there. in your first mission. It is used to you have to hit the pop bumpers fifteen times, I believe, in order to uh, rescue the child. Yeah. So it is actually used, mm-hmm. um, but not in the typical ways from what I can tell. Anyway, uh, directly behind this yeah. right pop bumper is a lane that the ball can dribble out of. So the ball can either dribble out 
over here on the left, or I can dribble out right down the center here uh, through the spinner. And the fun thing is, is where yes, it drains, <laughs> wee, it comes right, Sneal and it'll just hit the, the tip middle. of the flippers. Yeah. Both of these just hit yep. the tip of the flipper. It's scary. You're like, do I let a dead pass, or do I flip and hit? I don't know. Yep. And uh, you do so at your own It peril. is risky city. It is. It's. Uh, it, I'm wondering about that lane, because... I think they might have realized that it stays in the pop bumpers too long, so they need to give it. They need to give it another exit Somewhere path because there's no scoring in that lane. Yeah, there, it's just like a, a, it's a, just path a path out of the pop bump. Yeah. Yes. Um, in front of that pop bumper, you have these three stand-up targets. Uh, you mm. Hit these x amount of times, and two of these will lower. And this is where a ball lock is. It's the world's mm. hardest ball lock for some reason. It is. Uh, Literally for, impossible to get, but hey. You yeah. have to lock up two balls in there to get child multi-ball going on, in which case this little vent here, uh, the child pops up out of. Uh, this vent is it's actually a... used for other characters also to pop, like a stormtrooper pops out of that vent at one point also. Yeah, depending on what mode you're in. Yes. It's a character vent. Character vent. Um, yeah. Oh, lest you saw, didn't see him, the Mando is uh, standing right here. Hanging around there. Hanging He's around got his own little there. vent that he likes to come up in and out of. I have a question, well. Jared. I don't know if you've noticed or if you've even gotten far enough. Uh, as you earn certain Beskar uh, rewards, uh, or go, have you noticed him leveling up his armor? No, I haven't actually seen that change. I can't. So he actually changes, does he? I don't 100% know. I think he does, because I think he gets a little bit shinier mm -hmm. as I play. Um, oh, that's right, because he's he's basically in episode one armor yes. there. Um, yes. And, and towards I, the end of episode 10, he's like got a few more plates on. And I bring that up for a reason that we'll get into when we talk uh, Stern. Um, mm. Over mm. here, we have the IG-11 hiding in a cylindrical uh, <laughs> chute that Zen does love to use. They've done it on... Uh, Family Guy, I think. South Park, I think. Uh, they've done it on Doom. Uh, basically, it becomes a magnetic mm. uh, lane here. But you've got this little yeah. block going on right here. Well, how do you uh, get that down? This is what all your in-lane targets are for. Spell out IG-11. Yeah. That lowers that. Then when you shoot here, ball gets captured by a magnet. You get a lovely amount of time uh, reading the DMD telling you what is about to happen and that you have to hit the uh, launch button in order to start it. In which case, there's a wall that can basically be brought up temporarily. And so mm. as the ball comes around here, you need to time it so that you bring up your wall and that so that the ball can continue its journey and it goes faster and faster. It's basically jump rope mode in uh, Champion Champ Pub. Pub. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, totally. But with a different mechanism. Yes. So you've got child multiball right here if you get two ball locks. You've got IG-11 multiball. So once you've done enough spins, IG-11 raises up. By the way, IG-11 is fully animated. He shoots his lasers. He spins around. His arms move. It's really mm. kind of a cool uh, use of and placement of the character. Uh, it is. But so he'll raise up, revealing a hole, shoot balls in there. So far, I've only been able to lock two balls, but I did read in the game instructions that there's the opportunity to lock up to six. I think it's a progressive Ooh. each time you do IG-11 multiball that it... Um, raises how many you can have in play at one time. I guess uh, it makes it more difficult as well, doesn't it, to actually get? Probably, yes. Idea. Yes. It's not easy. <laughs> so child multiball, IG-11 multiball. There's one other multiball that uh, will clue you into also. Um, before we go any farther around, do you see these uh, two lines that go across the play field? That would be where... It's cardboard cutout mode. Yes. <laughs> Zen's infamous cardboard cutouts pop up. And uh, for various, various like at one point, it's a whole bunch of just random characters that pop up um, from the garrison that you're trying to defeat. At another point, the Mudhorn pops up, um, and you're dealing with that. And I'll also note that right in front of that, right here, is a ramp that pops up. And that ramp is for, like, say, the Stormtrooper is standing right here for shooting and hitting the Stormtrooper and launching over the cardboard cutouts. I think of it like uh, the ramp you see on GoldenEye that just pops out of the play field. Um, or the ramp that's the, in the Empire. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Or the ramp that's in uh, pretty much <laughs> all of the uh, Pinball 2000 games that are out there. It's yes. just get, gets you up, gets you ball the off the play The old hidden field. ramp trick. 
it's, it's, right. it's as if it's as if Zen really likes the game Fire from Williams, but never wanted to make it. Um, okay, so right next to IG Eleven, you've got this. You see this little side lane, which is impossible to hit from a flipper down here, but it is absolutely possible to hit from this flipper over here. This flipper, you shoot this. This is what gets you your kickbacks. Uh, you have to shoot the ball in there a certain amount of times, and then you get to choose left or right kickback. I always go with the left kickback because this is a very, very, yeah, because that very hungry a drain hole. Monster. It is this whole yeah, table. It's a drain just monster, a geometry folks. of that. Yeah, that that the, the uh oh geometry in the area is to the right, um, and it's. Uh, it's it's weird the way the yeah. ball always wants to go down the left out lane there. Yeah. Yeah. Um also though, underneath this flipper, there is also a hole from which this flipper can shoot. This is uh basically your your uh, Mandalorian hideout. Um, mm. by doing a certain amount of spins, that's will randomize what your reward is for uh underneath here. And you know that you have a reward rating because the like all sorts of little sparkles happen over the top of the uh, flipper there. Yes, you get the sparkles. Uh, yes, um, you have over here. There's three stand-up targets for B E S, and over here are three more for K A R for spelling Beskar. Um, and then you have this lane right here. We'll show a different angle a little later on, but this lane basically comes all the way up and around here. But you'll notice there's one, two, three spots that the ball can be diverted. Mm. And depending on which way the diversion is going, it can either send it back. I think it can send it all the way back down here. Yes, it uh, can. To the, uh, the lane, to the return lane. Or it can drop it. There's a little wire form right here. You can drop it right at this flipper. Sometimes there's a magnet here that'll catch. Or you can go here and it'll drop it right down the spinner lane. Or you can come over here and divert all the way to, again, to this side, to your left side in the return lanes. Or it can go just into the three uh, drop holes. Yeah. So it's a bit of a versatile shot, that one. And it doesn't really seem to have much rhyme or reason uh, yeah, when you shoot I, it, what one actually activates, does and, it? And there's not really any indicator. It's not like there's a light no. indicator telling you which one is active either. So it's yeah. a little bit tricky. Um Sort of feels a little bit like F14 Tomcat, doesn't it? Except that of. one does actually. It sort of tells you where the ball's going to drop, kind of. Yeah. Um, and a little bit like uh, Swords of Fury as well. Yeah. Uh, that's got a similar diverter. So, yeah. And then, last but not least, we have this far right lane here. Uh, you shoot that, and it's basically one of those inverted horseshoes that boom plops the ball right here on the Racer Crest magnetic playfield. Yes, this is uh, uh, virtual flippers. You have all these stand-up targets. Uh, when you're just doing a skill shot, when you first launch the ball and it pops here, you just need to knock down the R and the C, and that opens up the lane behind here. You then shoot in there, and that gives you the skill shot. When yep. you're in the game proper and you do that, you need to light up all of Razor Crest, and then these two targets will drop down. You do the exact same thing. That's how you lock the ball. Uh, yep. you can lock it first. The one you do is two ball, multi-ball. And I think after that you can do three ball, multi-ball, I think. Anyway, uh, but this is your third multi-ball of the game, Razor Crest multi-ball. Mm -hmm. And how that functions is the Razor Crest here will then come, it'll have the balls captured. It'll come over here, fly over, float around the middle of the play field and open up its cargo bay and drop the balls. It'll leave its cargo bay down, in which case you need to launch the ball up into the cargo bay. That gives you a jackpot. And then it'll come back over here, drop one of the balls onto the play field. And if you can send it up through that RNC hole again, that's your super jackpot. Hmm. So in a nutshell, there it is. There is your table. There's your shots. There's your shots. And hmm. it is a fun table to shoot around on. There is no doubt about that. Um, it's very Twilight Zone-esque. I was just going to say, I don't mind this table at all because it feels very Pat Lawler and like a Twilight mm. Zone table. And, of course, why it's does it like feel like... almost like reverse Twilight Zone, actually. In, in a way, so again, if we're mm. thinking Twilight Zone, well, what are the dead giveaways? Well, we have this power play field, basically. Yep. 
The uh, power field. Rather than being a pyramid shape, though, it's more of a rectangle. And also you have the... Uh, Again, this would be on the, the town square shot on Twilight Zone. That's the camera. Yeah. Camera, yeah, the camera. So underneath that, um, I guess you would call this the piano shot, except for there is nothing behind, you know, for it to, to go through. It's not like it drops in. Um, yeah. But having the, just the mere fact of having the four flippers the way they are, um, having that shot underneath the flipper, having the power uh, mode, that, that it very much feels Twilight Zone-ish. And... There's one other aspect that feels Twilight Zone-ish, and we'll cover that in a moment. Hmm. Um, thoughts on the table. What are your thoughts on the table, Jared? Uh, yeah, I really do like it. I think it shoots very well. Um, it's it's definitely challenging. Um, it is a drain monster. Uh, it wants your balls down the outlane as quick as possible. In fact, I think it's probably the, the most... Um, arcade-like table that Zen's created to date um, from its hunger perspective. And it's yes. desire it's to get it down the middle. Well, and um, we should point out that's that this actually is, good. it's also using the Williams physics. Um, yeah, and, and that makes it quite realistic. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's very much like Twilight Zone in many ways, not just in sort of the inspiration behind the table, which I think is fair to call it, because Zen does like to do that with their tables. They like to play pay homage to other um, yes. designers' um, layouts. I mean, I'll just give you an um, example of, of how mean this table is. Uh, slingshots! Boing, 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 boing. Outlane. 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 <laughs> yeah. If, <laughs> if, Every single time. They're if danger. your ball hits this post here... Assume Dead. it's going to go out the out lane, unless you do a nudge. There is no lucky bounce and it going... It's not a 50-50. It's like an 85-15% of which way it's yeah. going to go on either of these posts. Um, you will die. <laughs> yes. Let's say the ball is uh, you know, coming, coming down here, and it's coming at your left uh, flipper. And you mm -hmm. decide, ah, I'm going to catch that bad boy. Or actually, I should say, if it's coming down this... And you say, I'm mm -hmm. going to flip my flipper up. I'm going to get up, that. I'm going to trap it. Right? It's going to go. I'm going to trap it. It'll go boink yeah. right out the out lane. <laughs> yeah. It'll say, yeah, nah. No, you're not. <laughs> so <laughs> you're go it, the this table very much encourages you to do one of two things. Either hope the dead pass is going to work mm. or learn to do some live catching. Yeah. It's pretty important on this table, isn't it? It is. It is. You... And because you've got Williams physics, you can actually do it. You can. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, uh, it, yeah, it, it's nasty in that way. Uh, something, another reason why we say it's nasty. Jared, how many uh, chapters have you gotten through? Oh, I just, in probably about 50 games that I played on this thing, I, I just got up to chapter three. Um, the other day and I did it I thought you know what I actually managed to get past uh, episode one episode mm. two which are the two mandatory ones you yes. have to do and then I had the choice to select and I thought oh what one should I do well I've not seen any of them yet so let's do number three I guess <laughs> so I did and um, it was a stormtrooper mode I didn't finish um, yeah I don't um, I don't believe I've gotten past that one either <laughs> no. I may yeah. have like for some somehow I've got a pretty decent score. Like I'm like number eight at 133 million. That's something. a good score. Um, I, I only I think I put up 83 the other day, um, and I was pretty happy with that. But it literally happened like the first couple of times I played, and so I yeah. didn't know how difficult it was, so I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so I really don't know how far I got in the table. Um, I do think that I yeah. got some super jackpots in Razor Crest Multi Ball. I think that's where it, it mostly. I think came you from. might have got some points there, yeah, yes. for sure. Uh, but uh, wanted to. Whoops, not that one. Let's try a different screen. Uh, let's try that one. There we go. Fingers. All right. Um, fingers. One of the uh, things that what makes it so difficult just in the first two modes. Uh, the first mode. All of a sudden, you'll get three pop-ups here and three pop-ups here of yeah. characters. And when you hit them, bam, they just rocket back down and go oh, for center they, drains. They're brutal. Yeah. And it's not like it's, you it's knock a them a down. Hard introduction. Yeah, it's not like you knock them down and then you can access the back. You're not doing some Arkanoid action. No, as soon as you hit them, boom, they pop right back up until 
you've reached a certain point in the narrator doing the story. And let's just talk about that for a second here. Yeah. Folks, Zen has done a phenomenal job on the voiceover casting that they did with this. So yeah. they have their own voiceover for Mandalorian, which is a pretty easy thing to duplicate because it's all been put through a filter anyway. Yeah. And then the call it the narrator of the of the table that tells you what is story wise happening. They basically cast a sound alike for in the forge, uh, the yes. the the Mandalorian uh, uh, blacksmith. Yes. So she talks a lot. <laughs> she, she does. She has quite a bit of uh, content to get across. Yes, and they sound really good. Um, I was fooled. I thought that they actually got the original voice I did too. for it. I did too. So uh, until she gets done telling her part of the story, the needs to these just stand ups. Six yeah. of them. So it's a it's got it's a double edged sword. Like you, it's annoying because you don't get rewarded for actually knocking them down. But well, you get points, there are some but big it's not, points to yeah. be added. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say they actually have some good points available on those targets if you don't drain. Yeah. Um, but you you've got to keep your you've got to keep your um yeah finger on the tilt um yep. tilt uh, uh joystick uh when you're playing this game and, and most of the, these modes have two parts basically so once you like in this first one once you knock down the six targets uh that then it becomes time to go collect the child how do you collect the child or at that point they don't know it's the child it's the you know, the the package the asset whatever well asset. Yeah. all of a sudden that's where you have this lane lit and this lane lit so that you can send up into the drop holes to drop and start hitting pop bumpers because you need to hit like 15 yeah. pops in order to win the points. And the points are on a countdown. Uh, so it's a little bit of a hurry up mode. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. if you don't collect in time, you just get a measly 1 million points. Um, yeah. And then it just, it's like, okay, mission done. And then you go to your mission next done. mission. So, so really, it's, it's almost like uh, each mission is on rails. From the yes. perspective that you've got to you've got to do as many hits as you can while the narrator is describing the story. At least in the first couple of rounds, it may be different in the other ones. And by the um, way, uh, merely draining the ball does not end the mission. When no, you it carries over, you lose the ball, it carries over. That mission's still waiting for you. <laughs> yep, you still got more draining to be done. <laughs> yes. So yep. again, that's why this table is it, it's a bit nasty. It's a bit mean. Um, but it it's has, nasty, right? but it has that. Uh, oh, just one more time. I can do better. Just one more it time. It really does. It you know, just so. draws you in for one more game. It is a absolute. It, it will be a quarter. It will be a quarter muncher in the arcades for sure. Absolutely. If this was a real table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a good amount of fun, and uh, despite it kicking our butts, um, it's. It's just got a lot going for it. And I think that those of you that uh, aren't on VR and are obviously going to be waiting for this to come to Pinball FX, uh, you're going to have a great time with it. Um, yeah. It's got a lot of legs um, yes. on it, um, given that it's so difficult. We cannot um, say that about Star Wars collectibles, but we can say that about this. That'll be another episode, that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's talk about real quickly... Some of the, I don't know if we want to do factors that uh, Zen did right, or some of the factors that Zen maybe kind of miffed on. Uh, yeah, let's let's. I think we've given enough praise for the table. I think we yes. need to balance it out with a little bit of um, constructive criticism at this point, given we played it a fair bit. Yeah. Um, I think. It's one of those things. I brought this up when we first recorded. I'll bring it up again because it is actually an important thing. Um, I think the days of the sixteen by nine monochrome DMD are fast becoming over. Uh, I think that they that Zen really need to now focus on it at a minimum, changing that sixteen nine monochrome to at least color. Yes. Um, or going down the path of stern and actually doing a larger fully featured lcd display so a 16 by 9 lcd screen that does full video uh doesn't need to be digitized or dot matrixed 
Um, especially, and you'll notice it. right here, there ain't no dots. <laughs> there's no dots. And the reason because there's no dots is most likely because the aliasing issues they're having yeah. in the build at the moment. If that had dots on it and the aliasing there, you would literally not be able to read the screen. It would be yeah. that bad. Um, um, so... I'm going to point out to something that I think that they need to work on here. Uh, mm. Razor Crest. That's what is it uh, hiding in the desert? Where's the where's the chrome? There, yeah, there's there's no bling. Wash. There's no shine. Needs, yeah, they need to put it through the uh, space car wash. No, what did I just ship do? wash? I just hit a button. You did Let's go back to that. There we go. Um, yeah. The other thing that I want to point out is uh, there's not much light on the table. And no. that's kind of a shame because, and when we look at the stern table, you'll understand what I'm saying. Uh, just having a little light here, a little light here on the sides, well, what is that? And and this is all basically typical incandescent lighting. We're yeah. not getting RGB lighting going on. Um, We're not getting really much flasher action either. Like there's no. no real bright light sources on this table. It sort of feels a bit... Land. And I think when you've come from playing the Williams tables, which mm. ha they don't even have the massive light show, but they've definitely got that attract light lighting style. Um, their orchestration you... of their light shows is particularly good, and they know the importance of it. Yeah, because it it's a, it's an, it's an attractant for the table. And and this this table just doesn't have that, and so that's kind of no. a bummer. Right? It, it's something again that I wish that. Uh, that they could have blinged this up again. I mean, even if you just look at the chrome, all the chrome is kind of dull and, and it is sandy. Dull. There's just no shine on the table. And again, we could be calling, we could be talking about a performance issue here. We could be. We could be. So um, hopefully by the time it comes to pin pinball effects, maybe that gets addressed. But maybe there's a bit of a texture bump or a resolution bump in some of the assets. Yeah. And we get a little bit more bling. But it's one of those things uh, that, would that would be, be really nice. Cool. And, and I hope also that uh, Zen takes feedback from the VR folk and maybe does a code update um, when it comes time for Pinball FX. Uh, use us as kind mm. of your, your, you know, what Stern does. <laughs> Everybody that yeah. buys the table is now your beta. And That's right. <laughs> let's see what shots get sh spammed and if there's any uh, rules that need to be kind of slightly adjusted or, or tweaked. Um, yeah, absolutely. To approach these tables as you would a real pinball table, the yeah. code updates, people expect code updates now and they expect rule changes. Um, they, I think the way Zen, uh, Stern does it and the way they've set expectations now is nice. They've got like a base set of rules and then those rules get refined, not necessarily changed dramatically, but just refined. And I think if Zen adopted that approach with their rulemaking and their table design, it would actually start to really make people sit up and notice the fact that these aren't just like digital tables. These are growing living things yeah. that actually do evolve over time. Uh, something else I want to point out that's kind of a uh, negative. Okay, so you'll notice this view here. There's yeah. three of these views, basically. There's being all the way at the left, all the way at the right, and dead center. You'll yeah. wind up doing the dead center whether you like it or not because once you light... Uh, fill up Mando's fuel tank enough, you go into this uh, immersion mode to fire your flamethrower. Yeah. And the flamethrower is actually kind of cool in terms of what it oh, it's does. Cool. Because yeah. basically, you have a reticule out here, a target reticule, and that kind of just goes in an arc back and forth uh, that you control yep. with the flippers. And as the ball comes, you move the reticule in that direction, the flamethrower shoots that, and the ball flies away, and it's basically, it feels very much magnetic, um, how this is yeah. being used. Yeah, oh, it's very magnetic in, um, in its feel. And so it's wonderful from the point of being that it feels still very mechanical. This table does not feel like, it doesn't do any of the worst Zen fantasy tendencies. Like, happen. you know, magic ramps appearing out of nowhere right. sort of stuff. Right, Everything no, feels everything like it's Everything is grounded mechanical. in mechanics. It's mm -hmm. grounded in mechanics. Yeah. Me mechanical physics, it feels. Yeah, I agree. The the bad news, though, is I don't know a point to the flamethrower mode. There's no... I don't know a point either. There's, there's no super points to be gathered from it. There's no specific target to be hitting. You just shoot the ball around until you run out of fuel or drain, and then you go mm. back to regular play. So this would be the kind of thing that I'm hoping that 
either that mode is just a simple trainer for a mode later on in one of the chapters that matters. It's almost like an introduction of the mechanism, right? Yeah, kind of. It feels like that at the moment. It sort of feels like, hey, this is a thing that you can do in this table. Maybe there is a mode later on where you got to... But then the fact that I can just continue to refill my tank and do the mode again, well, again, what's what's the point? Um, Mm. This is something that uh, Deep apparently uh, wanted to introduce. He likes to introduce new things to the tables yeah and this was a new thing that he wanted to introduce so is how it is i don't mind at all and i like the mode it's kind of a in a way it's a video mode um yeah but it's using the table i just wish there was a point to it <laughs> something yeah to do. That, me too it would be nice if there was some sort of reason behind it yeah um mm. so that's kind of a one more negative that i have regarding this um, but it's kind of think, minor. But beyond that, it's we like the table a lot. It's good. It's very good. We do. But now let's go and have a look at the competition. Let's look at the competition. Okay. You guys ready to put on your sunglasses? Um, That's color, folks. <laughs> yeah, that is color. That's color. Wow. <laughs> that is just a rainbow vomit of color. Uh, and now granted, this is Stern turning every single light on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's gorgeous looking. And just How some vibrant highlights. How does it look in comparison? Like it just wants you, it just yeah. entices you to walk up and play the thing. Now Stern went the route of having a giant child figure. Mm. Uh, the bad news is the child doesn't do anything in terms of no. he doesn't move, he doesn't blink, he doesn't turn his Not head. Even, his head doesn't nothing. even turn. No. Yeah. Nothing. So that's kind of bad. Hey, look, shiny razor crest. Good. Look at the shininess. Bad news is how small the razor crest is, and you will show a shot of that a little bit. Um, artwork. Both tables decided to go with uh, a nice hand drawn feel. Zen or uh, Stern's is a little more comic book, uh, whereas yes. Zen's is a little more realistic. Um, but neither one of them went the Photoshop route, so I'm really happy about that. Mm. Um, again, though, just everything about this is just bright and shiny and part of that too again you'll notice stern still very much uses the uh the typical insert lighting and it's yeah. jeweled faceted yeah, yeah faceted. jeweled faceted yeah and that's something that uh zen does not do um uh, let's see oh there's a good picture of the rotating play field that uh stern has is on the premiums it's yeah the premiums, premiums and LEs. yep um, and it's interesting that in the pro, what they've done is they've varied the flipper strength up there, so you get the same feeling as if the the playfield is raising and lowering and tilting, but it's just the flipper strength that changes. That's so interesting. It's, it's, yeah, it actually makes it harder okay. to actually shoot those shots, which I think is a really good good balancing act with the pro audience. Here's a whole um, lot of uh, shiny metal. <laughs> plenty of chrome in this game. Yep. Yeah, got lots even, of chrome. Even the um, the the pro has a reasonable amount of chrome in it as well, which is unusual. Yeah. Um, for pro machines, uh, magnet that is only on that's not on the pro version, but is on the uh, premium, premium and LE. LE, uh, yeah. A little signature action and some back glass and blah 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 blah, so, etc. So there you go. There's kind of that uh, that view though, and again, all the lights are on on this one, but um, nice and shiny. So what yeah. are we going to do though? Instead, we're going to do this kind of a comparison. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, look Let's at do side some side-by-sides. Side. Now, you'll notice that I have two of the Zen up here. Reason being, yep. and you'll notice this, one of them has the Razor Crest, one of them doesn't. And so yeah. I wanted to highlight that just so that we can see uh, what it looks like when, what that portion of Rampage looks like. Let me get over here so you can get a little better picture um, of what's going on there in terms of you see how there's a diverter right here. Yep. Um, They'll snip it back down mm-hmm. to um to your right flipper. So there's yep. really there's actually four diverters that affect the path of the ball in that ramp, which is actually yeah. huge. Um so yeah, you've got a lot of different pathways off that ramp. Which makes me think it's actually quite an important ramp to shoot in the game. I'm just not quite sure as we said, under what conditions do you need right. to shoot. Now, the other thing I'll point out is you'll notice right here I have a captured ball that is a different color. 
And this is uh, from the second mission. And basically, if you're familiar with the show, you battle the Mudhorn because the Jawas want the egg. And so you need mm. to get this egg because the Jawas have destroyed your uh, Razor Crest. That's why the Razor Crest is not there. And yep. so now you're shooting about with the egg. I can swear that the egg is much like, again, Twilight Zone with the ceramic ball. To me, this ball bounces a lot crazier than the steel ball. Jared's not quite mm. sure. It might be a placebo effect of me just thinking and feeling it that way, but uh, if it any of you... It could be, but I really hope it is, because I'd, I'd love it to be like that. Yes, if that, so... If it was a deliberate a deliberate um, change of uh, weight and physics, that would yeah. be really cool. If anyone else out there is uh, uh, has been playing this and uh, feels the same way, please pop in the comments and let us know that uh, I'm not mm. uh, Ill, you know, imagining things. But here you can get an idea of, see, we've got all sorts of inserts now lit up and this is nice i'm i'm so happy to see proper inserts uh and these blink and tell you where to send your shots you're never at a wonder for what to shoot next it's a fairly straightforward table um yeah which is the addition of words the addition of words on these inserts i know they're a pain in the butt for localization but they are super important for being able to play the game well yes uh, so I hope that this is now the new standard with all the games coming out. But how awesome would these be if they were jeweled? Oh, yeah. Just Fantastic. look over here. Look, just look over at these. Oh, I want Zen to use standard lighting. I know they can get away with this because it's you know a digital table and you can do custom cutouts and it's not a big you know big deal. They're not worrying about manufacturing costs. Yeah. But I prefer this look. Just saying. The jeweled um, look looks good. I'm just wondering if like. I think they could make it so the lights had the effect without actually putting the polygons below the each of the lights to actually make the facets. Right. I think they could have the effect of facets, but not have to actually code the polygons below it to actually look faceted, so just, which of course would be a huge performance hit. Yeah. Um, we're not going to go over all the shots on the stern because uh, honestly, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. We don't know them. And any information that we were getting would be basically if you went to Dead Flip's Twitch stream and watched. Mm. So go watch. <laughs> because it's a really good stream. And it is. They, he's, got, he's got the designers on and they go into all the shots you can take, how you do it. So if you ever get the chance to play this on site, you're going to have a much better time playing it if you watch the video. So yeah. absolutely check it out. It's, so it's pretty good. If you notice, you can, what I'm saying about the art style. See, it's still hand drawn, but it's a more realistic look. As opposed to a mm. more, I mean, just look at the two Mandos. That's very comic book Mando. That's, mm. you know, we're trying to, to go for something. <laughs> a little more gritty more and gritty. realistic, aren't we? Um, you know, we do have one... the child on the table oh. here. Yes. Uh, front and center. Front and uh, center. Whereas here, and I do got to say, with all this many inserts, it is kind of like... It's it, hard to lay out on. It, it, yeah. yeah, it's hard to see things. So, what were you going to say, Jordan? Yeah. I was just going to say that there is a notable difference of characters on the tables, isn't there? Yes, right here. Mm. Cara Dune, uh, your your Gina Carano character. Um, it was interesting because if you've paid any attention to what's been going on with Mandalorian, you'll know that uh, Disney has fired Gina from the show for third season and has also put on hold the uh, spinoff show that was going to be featuring her uh, due to some statements that she had put out on Twitter and uh, mm. that she hadn't learned her lesson on how to play nice with corporate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what was, what's interesting is that when this layout came out for Stern, everybody noticed that and said, oh, well, yeah, of course they didn't put her on there. Yeah, but the but, Zen table was being developed at the same time, and here she is, one of yep. three. Well, I mean, I guess four if you count the child here. Um, but yep. yeah, you got Mando, you got her, you got IG Eleven, front and center, large as day. So mm-hmm. clearly, it, and these both got approved by Disney. So clearly, yep. Disney didn't have an issue, <laughs> and With so it's just kind of interesting. It is interesting, isn't it? Also, you'll notice that uh, Zen's table is the first season only. There's eight chapters, so one for each episode. Mm. The Stern table uh, isn't that way, and literally your first mission could be something from the second season. Yep, they've got all two seasons on there, yeah. so they've really packed them in. Um, so um, the Zen table mm. is very much story, story, story. 
Stern is going to be greatest hits. Hey, isn't this cool? We, you know. Yeah. Um, select the missions. I'm pretty sure that the the potentially the missions you select and the order you select them in might actually play into scoring in the game as well, potentially. Possibly. And, and I'm going to say Stern's going to have a much deeper rule set and strategies yeah. for scoring. Um, and well, big part of that is, and I find this kind of interesting, and this is what I was going to ask about why well, I asked you about uh, Mando and his best car. Um, mm. So there's a mode within the Stern that they're taking the RGB aspects, which I went, have you guys been paying attention to Zen? Like Skyrim? Mm. Because literally there's a point where you go into the hideout and you can spend your best car, then you can select, and when I, it's spending it on things like ball save, uh, extra ball lighting extra ball. lighting yeah. the extra ball, buy extra balls, um, advancing it's missions uh, I mean there's there's 12 different things that you can select and yeah. you're earning Beskar with which to spend it on I'm like holy crap it's total RGB uh, or role playing RPG or RPG or, yeah, yeah RGB RPG yeah it's total role playing <laughs> going on and yeah. that's pretty cool that Stern it's very cool is going that route because it's we're 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 getting ever closer, folks. We're getting closer um, to to the That's point right. where Stern's probably going to be like, "Hey, um, all right, Jared's going to take a phone call real quick. I'm going Stay to uh, talk. I'll some be things. back. Yes, I'm going to talk some things here. Um, hey, Dan, how you going? Hold on, let's let's mute and Jared though. That would be good. Yeah. Maybe. So uh... <laughs> there he goes. All right, he's he's got his car getting worked on. Um, other aspect that we can talk about with regards to the stern table i'm going to bring this up here and oops not what i meant to do let's go over here we're going to go back over to the top if you look here let's look at the scale of things so on the stern table you've got giant grogu you've got giant mando head and itty bitty razor crest whereas over on the zen table you've got the Bando figure, same scale as the IG-11 figure, which are both smaller than the giant Razor Crest. Um, and so it's kind of visually appealing. It keeps with the tone of everything, as opposed to, again, it's like, I get it, they don't have a lot of space and they're trying to, you know, they don't have, Stern doesn't have the luxury of being able to have the Razor Crest disappear and be able to move about the playfield and go different directions. So they are confined by things, but it is kind of odd, the uh, sense of scale uh, for where things are going here. Um, I do find it also interesting, the fact that they both have these mini playfields, right? So obviously... Zen went the route of the magnetic mini play field, but sure enough, Stern also has the mini play field. And that's where it's kind of interesting that there are certain aspects that are, it's like, what, do they both have the same good idea? Um, but layout wise, you look at the Stern is a fan layout. Whereas the Zen table is much more of a shooter layout. I don't know what, you, I don't know what you'd call this kind of layout, but it's not a fan layout. <laughs> It's sort of a start-stop layout, really, isn't it's it? It's very like much it's, a start-stop layout, yeah. Yeah, it's very much like Twilight Zone, actually. Right. Um, so, yeah, they've, they've gone... I mean, fans seem to be the most popular with, with players because mm -hmm. they promote good flow yeah. uh, in the shots. But, um, I don't know, It's a, it seems to be a common theme a lot of the time in, in Stern games. I mean, there are... Some of the games that are out there at the moment, we've got um, the Avengers. Uh, it's quite flow yeah. Like you've got a lot of like good shots to take in that one, but then you look at something like Turtles, which to me doesn't really have that flow to it. It's a little bit stop start mm -hmm. sort of. I don't know. Uh, so what I so before Jared had to to bail and we were I was talking about the uh, the RPG elements. So this is where mm -hmm. I was asking because it got pointed out on Kerry Hardy has a video about uh, he's saying the good, the bad, the ugly on the Stern, and mm -hmm. in general he's really he thinks they did really well. But he also did bring up, because he's got the Oculus, he did show quickly a brief clip of him playing Zen's Mandalorian. But he showed there was a static image. When I say static, it's just literally a static image of the Mandalorian uh, when you're doing just your basic play. And he's in his basic armor. And so he was like, mm. hey, if I'm doing all of this collecting a Beskar, how come I can't RPG out my guy? 
and and make him. And I went, mm. you need to play Epic Quest. <laughs> you absolutely do. So yeah. if anybody uh, knows how to slide into Carrie's uh, uh, DMs, do so and and be like, dude, you need to download Pinball FX2 VR and play Epic Quest. And it's going to do exactly the thing that you're hoping happens on Stern with the man with Mando. And it's what I, that's yes. why I need, I need to pay attention and see if, if on Zen's that his armor changes as you go through. Unfortunately, Get again, mold. I haven't gotten far enough and I, I don't pay close attention to when I've earned Beskar to see, but I did notice at one point he kind of like looked down and, and kind of patted where I was like, it does look a little shinier where he was. Mm. Again, I don't know. So again, for those of you that are playing this and know it, uh, let us know if we're we're spacing out or not. Um, yep. Other than that, it's going to be, a, I mean, it, it's Comparison wise, without us actually physically playing uh, this, which Jared's probably going to have the opportunity long before I do, um, mm. it's not like we can go, oh, yeah, this one's way better or this one's not. I think both companies have done an excellent job based off yeah. of what we've seen video wise and based off of us having played uh, Stern or uh, Zen's Mandalorian. Yep. I think I, you're right. I just really would like Zen to. To bling it up a little bit more, though, just make it, uh, make it have just more shiny, ma make it more lights, yeah, prettier, yeah, colorful, the, some f more flashes, more vibrant flashes on there would make a big difference. And um, I really do think, you know, like upping the game with the DMDs and um, also looking at RGB lights um, for the playfield to actually vary the lights that you see, um, I think that will be quite a good idea as well. And damn it, put a clock in the fan cave. And a clock. Yeah. <laughs> Quit playing with the clock. Oh my God. Can you? It's... No, I mean, but I'm, I am serious though. When I'm in a VR environment like that, that's the only thing that's missing for me. I do. And because especially as you're playing the table, you can still look around the fan cave. It's yeah. not like you're locked into the table. No, you can. You can hold the flipper and look to the side and see all the walls and your posters and, oh, yeah. and the statuary that's up. My God, if I could just have a clock, my kingdom for a clock, because yep. I, I, yep. I don't want to have to take off the the VR to look at that, and I don't have a yep. quick access button to pop up like Jared does. The Oculus menu, yeah. The Oculus menu, yeah. Yeah, and what a cool collectible, anyhow. Like oh, I know they've made plenty of clocks. You know how many Star, Star Wars, Wars clocks so. they've made? Digital oh, so analog many. is ridiculous. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, how hard would it be to tap into your own PC's clock? Not hard. Not hard at all. At all. Um, mm -hmm. especially well, no, I take it back. They don't. Zen's never tapped into the the date which they should, um, because on certain Williams tables that uh, attack from Mars, like, yeah. mm, know the date and or the time because if it hits midnight, uh, midnight, that's when midnight Manus happens on some of these. Instead, you just have to go with the whatever the internal clock is that mm. is currently on there. But that's neither here yeah. nor there because we're talking Mandalorian, and the end result is. We really enjoy it. We really like it. I think you guys are going to be quite pleased when it comes to pinball effects. And mm. uh, it's definitely something to look forward to. Uh, oh, yeah. No doubt about it. And uh, it's also something that if this is the direction that Zen it continues going with developing, uh, using these physics and making everything feel very mechanical, and dropping the just utter fantasy aspects yeah. of things, um, that's all good. Yeah, that's all good in my books as well. I think uh, the more rooted in in the reality, with a few visual tweaks here and there, but nothing that can't really be done physically, even if the bill of materials would be astronomical. <laughs> you know, make it so it's... You know, like, cardboard cutouts are a good example of that. We're not, we're not really a big fan of them. No, I'm not, and it would be... do them. Because one of the things that you could do instead of... This is drop targets. You could use just real drop targets. That'd be one thing, but that's kind of boring in, it is. in the sense of, of what's going on. But so why not 3D models? You've done it with zombies before on, you know, Walking Dead, and yep. you've done it on very... You shoot on Creature from the Black Lagoon. you got the creature... You know, popping up, yeah. make it a bash toy. I mean, that's what it, we want. It can still react. You can still program it way. as if it was hitting an actual 
uh, target like it is yeah. doing, but make it visually interesting. Um, yeah. Make them glowy. Right. Like, make them, I don't know, just... <laughs> I think that would actually solve a lot of the problems with the, you know, the, the flashiness that we're talking about with this table. Yeah. Like, if, you know... Eh, I'm sure there's probably performance cost savings in having flat textures that you need to animate, and that's fair enough. But, you know, having something that's like 3D modeled, like you say, Chris, would make a big difference to um, the feel you get from the table and the integration with the theme as well, I think. Yeah. It's sort of like you see the thing pop up and you go, hmm, yeah, that's that's a flat surface. You yeah. know, you, you imagine if you were slapping the, a ball, uh, the oh my God. with a ball. I was saying, but How good would it be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, those are our mm. basic thoughts. Know, Jared, do, do you do you have any other points? No, you know? no, I've covered them all. Yeah, there you go, folks. So jobs done. Jobs done. Get yourself, uh, you get yourself an Oculus, or go ahead and wait. But uh, either way, you're going to uh, enjoy this table. And mm. we don't think that uh, what Stern did was too terrible either based off of what we're no, saying it looks pretty good i mean i'll i will i will flip it if i ever get to play a uh, player yeah yeah for sure so i don't know what do you guys think tell us who who hmm. do you think uh did a little uh better job uh which one's more appealing to you um yeah and which are you more likely to get your hands on first i think i know the answer to that um <laughs> so we're gonna yeah. call it a rare episode for us that where we're only talking about a zen one thing one thing one table. Mm. So we'll have to adjust that because in literally two days, <laughs> Zen is going to be doing another episode of the Pinball Show, which will give us, I'm sure, other fodder to talk about. Uh, For sure. What are, just a quick guess, Jared. What do you think the table theme for their second original that they're going to announce is going to be? Oh, it's... Because Rose be gave the hint. Where I think she went... Pirates is like, or something like that. Or what game recently have they released that's sort of piratey or nautical themed? Well, Dread Nautical is definitely mm. uh, nautical themed and would make a whole lot of sense if Zen made it a would. table based on that, seeing as how they've got all the art already. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's our yeah. prediction. We're, we're laying down yep. our prediction before the show actually happens. Dread Nautical for the win. Because I just don't see what the appeal of generic pirate theme would be when you've already got Black Rose. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we've already seen a generic pirate thing with Black Flaggers yep, um, exactly. as well. So, like, a, a Dread Nautical table would be sweet. And it can only bring players into the Dread Nautical universe. Like, they get a taste of it in Pinball, they might want to check it out. So, And if they do do Dread Nautical, then Operencia for sure is going to be another <laughs> Yeah, pick. I can almost, yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, that's it for our time. Jared, tell them what they can look forward to next time. Stuff and things. Until then, folks. Bye-bye. See you later.